Now it's time for Jump In with Julius. Hey all you cool cod and catfish, I'm Julius with Milwaukee Riverkeeper and welcome to another episode of Jump In with Julius. Here in Milwaukee Riverkeeper, when we do our river cleanups, we inevitably find plastic in our rivers. Plastic wrappers, plastic food containers, even cigarette butts contain plastic. Plastic is terrible for the environment. Did you know that to make plastic, you need to use oil and gas, which are non-renewable resources, meaning that once the planet runs out of them, we cannot make any more of it. Also, it takes thousands of years for plastic to break down in the environment. Even when it does, it breaks down into a tiny, harmful microplastics that can get into our food, our water, and even the air we breathe. Many fellow river and earth lovers are looking for solutions to this problem. One idea is to replace plastics with bioplastics. Bioplastics are made from renewable resources and break down easier in the earth, making them healthier for the planet. But do they work as well as people say they do? Are they the perfect solution to plastic problem that we face? We're gonna find out by making our very own DIY bioplastics. Let's jump in. Let's start by gathering our ingredients. First, cornstarch. You can also use tapioca starch. Glycerin, which can be found at most grocery stores or pharmacies. Vinegar. Optionally, you can get a natural food coloring, such as turmeric. These ingredients are made from corn or soybeans, so they'll break down naturally in the environment. You'll also need the following. A pot, a stove or a hot plate, a tablespoon and a teaspoon, water, tin foil or a plastic mat. Optionally, you can get a mold of some cool shape and a spatula. Me, I've got my standard jumping with Julia spatula, but any spatula will do. Once you have everything you need, put down your mat or aluminum foil to put the plastic on later. Measure out one tablespoon of starch. Add four tablespoons of water. Add a teaspoon of glycerin and a teaspoon of vinegar. Mix all of the ingredients while it's still cold. Once they are mixed, put the stove on low. For my younger audience, make sure to ask a parent or guardian before you use a hot surface. Over time, the white milky mixture will start to solidify and become more gooey and like toothpaste. So after about 10 to 15 minutes, uh, it should be pretty thick like this consistency and pretty clear except for some of the bubbles that are in there. And that's when you'll know it's done. Uh, at this point, if you'd like, you can add some of uh, whatever coloring you wanted to use. Make sure to turn off your stove and then pour the bioplastic right onto your mat or aluminum foil. If you have a mold, make sure to put it in there as well, getting to all the edges. Lay it on as thick or as thin as you would like. Once that's done, leave it there for 15 minutes to half an hour. Once they're done, take them off the sheet and take off the mold. Congrats, you've made bioplastic. As you can see, I've made a plate for my avocado toast and a house for my two frog friends. Now that we've finished our bioplastic, do you think that they're a great solution to the plastics that we normally have? While they look pretty, my bioplastics broke down pretty easily. What would you do differently to solve this problem? And what ideas do you have to make the bioplastic stronger? My idea was to do the experiment again, but this time I used gauze and put the plastic around it to make it more sturdy. I ended up with this, a plastic that was more sturdy and flexible, but would take a little longer to break down. As you can see, it's hard to make bioplastic that breaks down easily and is sturdy. What about you? Do you have some ideas on how to make an effective bioplastic? How do you think we should solve our plastic problem? Share your thoughts in the comments section. Also, if you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to post them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and remember to take care of each other and our rivers, like our frog friends here. And I'll catch you next week on Jumping with Julius.